Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. I'll be completely bold. Yellow Aki. I'm This is what it's like to be Adam Wickens. Hey guys, how's it going? We're gonna blow right past me not having hair and a beard, and we're gonna talk about five Tegu misconceptions and myths. Let's get right into it. We'll start at number five. At number five, we have not brumating your Tegu. The first year will stretch out its reproductive organs, ultimately making them unable to reproduce. Man, that's a mouthful for a first slide. This myth is probably the most powerful myth out of all five we'll be talking about today. It's had some powerful backing, such as Bert Langerworth, who sort of proposed this. I actually included this myth in my Tegu Brumation Guide I did quite a bit ago, and it's because it's important to understand the history of Tegu Brumation. When doing a literature review and understanding where we are in a current aspect of research, it's important to not only look at the most powerful portions of research and the latest discoveries, but also the failures, what we found didn't pan out. And this is one of them. One thing that one of my professors have always said to me when going through my PhD is, all research is good research. And all research in my mind should be publishable because it contributes to the larger knowledge base of what we understand about a current topic, but I'm going into some more personal stuff. Anyway, I guess what I'm saying is that all research should be critiqued and we should point out where the flaws are and it doesn't matter how strong the research is, we should definitely understand it and keep it in consideration moving forward and understand the history of where we're at with a current topic. And brumation is a really big topic. I mean, we definitely do not fully understand it in the least bit. And I would very much question someone who says that they do. There's a lot we gotta learn, but one thing I can tell you is that I'm pretty sure, I mean, there have been eggs laying and you know males reproducing after not going through brumation their first year. So I think you know there are some counter evidence, some counter cases to this. I wouldn't be too worried about this myth. And in fact, it is probably a myth. Before moving on, we are closing in on 6,000 subscribers. So I'd really appreciate it if you considered subscribing in that lower right hand corner and hitting that bell as well to get the latest updates on the channel. It would mean a lot to me, but let's move on to number four. Dog food cannot be a staple diet for tegus. I believe this is in fact a myth and I know this is very debated and I do believe the debate is actually around the potential to be more lazy when offering dog food. Now, if you offer your tegu dog food, I'm not calling you lazy, I'm just saying it's more possible. So before you get in those comments, which I do appreciate you leaving, let me just explain a little bit. Basically, I think it's a little bit easier not to offer a variety of nutrition or variety. I don't know what's going on with me in words. And that's why I love offering Tegu foods such as Reptilinks because they have such a good amount of diversity in them, whether it's a different link type or what's in each individual link. Also, it's really awesome that you can get $5 off your first order of Reptilinks by using code Professor Herb at checkout. That is really helpful as well. But if you're just going to the store, grabbing any old dog food and giving that to your tegu, that's probably not gonna work out too well, and it probably won't contribute to a well-rounded diet that your tegu should be having. Now, there are plenty of reputable keepers and breeders who have and do offer their tegu dog food as their main diet, and it's worked out very well from what I've seen so far. I've seen no counter evidence, but they look at the specifics of the brand. They make sure it's organic stuff. They make sure that they mix it up every now and then to include different ingredients. That's all important to add in variety, which is very important to a tegu diet. They are one of the most, I don't know, various, in lack of a better term, diet creatures or reptiles that we can own. They're such a plethora of things we can offer them that could fit into their diet and it makes it quite fun but also makes it quite difficult because you have to manage all of that stuff. So I do believe that dog food can meet the criteria for tegus and I do believe it's been successfully done and I do not think that it's necessarily bad for them. So myth in my mind. Now number three is an interesting one in the sense that I've never heard of it, not until I prepared for this video. But basically there's a rumor, myth, whatever you want to call it, that's gone around for some time saying blue tegus do not brumate. And that's 
pretty interesting. I'm not sure where it started. I couldn't find that. I did do some searching on Facebook in the Tegu file to see information on this, see more of that. And I didn't find too much on its origin, but I did see a nice, interesting chain discussion on the topic saying that there have been breeding groups in Europe that would die during brumation that were blue tegus. And I think it had some other causes possibly going down with food in their stomach, which we all know is a, a no-no for brumation, tegus are going into brumation. But I, maybe it stemmed from that. It was very interesting though, and obviously this is a myth because there are blues that do brumate. Uh, I mean, there's plenty that you can find online that are in brumation, pictures of them in brumation, owners you probably know of blue tegus that are in brumation. So they can brumate and they won't die in brumation, but I don't know. I didn't really ever hear of this myth before this video. I think it's pretty interesting. And if you know a little bit more about it and its origin, definitely leave me a comment below. But interesting number three. If you've been paying attention thus far, you probably have noticed some connection between tegu brumation and this. And number two is no exception to that rule. We're talking about brumation being understood as a long-term sleep. That is a myth. All tegus actually go through brumation differently. There is not one algorithm, not one path to brumation. Some tegus will wake up very periodically, get a quick bask in, drink some water, go back, and be in this more docile, sleepy state. Others, like Frap, the first year he went down, will sleep straight through it and will not come out. They do it all differently, and there's not one particular code or aspect to brumation that defines it. It's really just a periodic slowdown. And what I mean by slowdown can kind of be misconstrued, so let me explain. This is more of a metabolic slowdown than an actual slowdown. Yes, a lot of tegus get sleepier and are not as active as they are in the warmer summer months, but it's mostly their metabolic system that's slowing down and that's why it's so concerning to feed them during this period. This is one of the few aspects of tegu brumation that pretty much all tegus share. Otherwise, like I previously mentioned, they all go through it a little bit differently on an individual level. So we don't really have a hard definition for brumation and what to exactly define it just yet, but you can be sure that you should not associate brumation with a long-term sleep period. All right, guys, let's move on to number one on our list. Let's go. Wild-caught tegus are hard to tame down. It is well understood in the reptile community that usually wild caught is much harder to work with than captive bred, but tegus, a highly intelligent, especially socially, species, they are an exception to that rule. They can be tamed down even if wild caught. I know Alex is a gomet. His tegu is wild caught and is so sweet. There are troublesome cases, I'm not gonna lie, but there are troublesome captive bred cases. And I think it's more of an individual. I think even wild caught, no matter where, tegus are very adaptable and can learn very quickly on how they should act. And that's why I say they're socially intelligent more so than anything. They get compared a lot to monitors when talking about intelligence. And I think the ultimate standout that tegus have is they're more socially adept. And I think this is one of the cases that proves that. So I would not be concerned or fearful of getting a wild caught tegu, especially if it's still in the egg and not hatched yet. Those will probably be just as typical as a captive bred tegu. So, and ultimately why this is important that it's even worth really mentioning in the myth list is that there are plenty of businesses that actually go out, capture, invasive tegus in Florida and sell them as pets. And it's actually a really great way of going about the invasive issue there. Now, obviously they're probably not gonna make much of a dent, but you are potentially saving that tegu's life. You know, tegus are being hunted because they are invasive. So you could be taking in one of those invasive tegus and making it a pet and ultimately making a really good thing out of it, I, I feel like. So I definitely wouldn't be afraid of getting a wild caught tegu. Obviously double check the business you're buying from, of course, but being that it's a wild caught one and not cap the bread, I don't think that's something that should immediately be a red flag for you. Anyway guys, that's my five tegu myths and misconceptions. I tried to be a little bit out of the box, 
in this one like I did with the Aki monitor version. So let me know if you like it and let me know if you have any more Tegu myths that I didn't mention. A couple announcements before wrapping up. Shout out to the amazing patrons. We have Cat and Rick, Darian J, Smooth Cat, Angela L, David T, Hex, Stephanie S, Ellen M, and Toothy Chicken. I really appreciate your support. You guys too can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. Tier three gets you on my forehead. Everything in the right hand corner for you to check out. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Check out the merch as well. It's the left of my head, right of your screen. Otherwise, I will see you Wednesday in the next video. Actually, short tomorrow, so check that out at 4 p.m. See you guys.